Nina, I'd like you to tell us a bit about your graphic novel. It's quite the work of art. Excerpts have been printed for members of the jury and selected pages can be seen on the screen. But first, I'd like to get something clear. During the attack, you received a number of blows to the head. Is that right? Yes. And according to the medical reports from the hospital, you claim to have no memory of the attack. When I was at hospital, yes. That must be very frustrating to be unable to recall events after your major head trauma. It was, yes. Not being able to remember the night your boyfriend was attacked in the street. I imagine you would do almost anything that might help you get those memories back. Can you confirm this is your work? It is, yes. You're a very talented artist. Can you confirm that you drew these images after the attack? Yes. The images are clearly of a young couple being attacked in the street. But you just told us you couldn't remember what happened, so you couldn't have drawn these images from memory. Would it be right to say these images came from your imagination? Um, yeah, I, I suppose. And it's clearly an imaginary scene, as all the attackers in your drawing appear to be male, and we know for a fact that Kelly was there too. So, to be clear, this scene is something you made up. I suppose so, yeah. You suppose so? Are you not sure? I made the drawings to help me remember. But they're not accurate. Which means your memory keeps changing. No. It become clear. So we have your original police statement, the new one you made only this morning, and this version you drew. You see, it seems to me your memory can't really be trusted. This is a court of law. It's a place for the truth, not for imagination, dreams, and false memories. It's not a false memory. What's not a false memory? Your first statement, your second statement, or your imagination? Which of the three versions we've heard from you today is the truth? What I've told you today is the truth. That is what happened. And that may be what you believe. But we have to accept that your memory is clearly unreliable and your recollections depend on your imagination, your mood, and your emotions. Your version of events changes day by day. Can you honestly tell us for sure that this latest version won't change again? So, Nina, we've heard you say the graphic novel came from your imagination. To be clear, that page of the graphic novel Stop saying. It's not a graphic novel. Nobody even says a graphic novel apart from people who are too embarrassed to say comic. It's a comic. Barely that. It's just drawings and words which were meant to help me remember what happened that night. It wasn't meant to be a novel. It wasn't even meant to be seen by anybody. Okay. Okay, Nina. I know this is hard for you. I just wanted to be clear. And now I think I understand. It was a comic. Some drawings and words to help you remember what happened. It wasn't necessarily the truth. It was a way of helping you make sense of what you remembered at the time. Is that a fair summation? Yes. And yesterday, three months and 25 days, a total of 117 days after the attack, you believed you remembered more. Is that correct? Yes. I remember being on the ground and seeing Corey kicking Seb. Okay. And again, to be clear on this, you were convinced 117 days after the incident that what you experienced on Harper Street, where the attack took place, was a genuine memory. Not a partly fictionalised account based on what you remember. Not your brain attempting to make sense of what happened that night. In your opinion, what happened yesterday, beyond any doubt, was the unlocking of a 100% accurate memory that laid dormant for almost four months. Yes. 
Did anyone ask you to try and remember more on the days before the exercise? Yes. Could you state who that was, please? Simon came into work to check I couldn't remember anything else to help her. Could you state Simon's full name for the record, please? Simon Barlow. And what is Simon Barlow's relationship to Kelly Nealon? I think the friends. Did he mention that he went to visit her in prison earlier that day? Yes. And to confirm, he wasn't the person who suggested the exercise. He merely asked you to remember more. A lot of people have talked to me about this case. It wasn't like he came along to it or anything. Who was there for the reconstruction? Me, Asha Allahan, Summer, and Abby. Seb's mother? Yes. Perhaps you could talk me through this exercise. Your friends were with you to stand in for the people who were there that night, is that right? Sometimes, yes. Who played Corey? Um, Abby. And who played Kelly? It's not like anyone played anyone, really. They were just there to support. But you just said Abby Franklin played my client. At one stage, I asked him to stand where I thought people were that night. Abby stood where I thought Corey was. Where you thought Corey was. And who stood where you thought Kelly was? Asha. Asha. Your close friend, an ex-girlfriend, who was there on the night of the attack. Asha Allahan, the ex-girlfriend of my client and one of his most fervent accusers, played Kelly. It's not a false memory. It was real. I know what happened because I was there. Corey killed Seb because I was a weirdo who dressed differently. And I'm a weirdo who gets funny about what people call comics. I do apologise. No, you don't. He's sneering at me now. It's all over your face. You look the way he did that night. If I've caused you offence, I'm sorry. No. That means nothing. Say it properly. Say sorry to me. Go on. Ms. Lucas. I'm sorry. I've spent the last months terrified of who I am. Well, I'm not scared anymore. Not of anyone. Not you. Not him. Thank you, milady. I'll be brief, as my colleagues have already kept Miss Lucas in the witness box for some time. In fact, as the only eyewitness here today that isn't actually accused of anything, I just have three questions. Do you remember seeing Corey Brent repeatedly kicking Sebastian Franklin in the head on the night that he was murdered? Yes. And do you remember Kelly Nealon? Attempting to stop Corey from kicking Seb. Yes. She shouted at him to stop and tried to pull him away. And finally, do you remember seeing Kelly attacking Seb in any way? Whether it be punching, kicking, even just pushing? No. No more questions, my lady. In which case, I suggest we stop for a short break. That's it. Looks like it. Well, that's the important bit, isn't it? Uh, remembering it. Yeah, it's just a shame we've had to listen to that one, tear the whole remembering thing apart for the last hour. Yeah, but she's got to prove reasonable doubt, hasn't she? And a four-month-old memory unlocked is... Oh, 